was, uh, hi everyone, I'm gonna play, I am playing a new game that I just got, it's called, it's clearly, I am playing the Stanley Parable, and this is a very strange game, I've played a little of it so far, it's, it's different, and it's very creative, and it's very weird, so, let's give it a go. Yeah, it's basically what it is, is it's an ex exploration game, there's no enemies or anything that, I'm, that I've come across, it's good. It's just, and there's like a narrator too, it's cool. And, um, it's just, there's like, you have to find as many endings to the game as you possibly can, I think that's basically the goal. And apparently, one of the person I've found, um, that found it for me, or that recommended it to me, from I played it for about an hour and a half, and apparently I barely scratched the surface of the game, so I guess this is a pretty... Move that a little pretty elaborate game, and I'm probably just gonna edit out this loading screen and edit right to the gameplay. <laughs> so, this here we is go. the story oh. of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Stanley was happy. Okay. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got ah. up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, so, oops. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. Let me out of the room. And here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no <laughs> longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing Shut he knew up. for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. What the heck? Is that an ending? All right, well that's the game for you. This is ha this happens a lot. There's a, there's tons of endings of the game, and that's one of the more annoying ones I found. Just ah, can't close it on me that time. So yeah, we just have to All explore of this area. Oh, shut what up. What did it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right, so now I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I should listen to the narrator or. Try and bother him in every way, that's my... I don't know if you can open any of these or not, but yeah, this Stanley is basically went the around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Oh, shut up. You didn't advance the story anyway. Hmm. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left.
hell no. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. That's right. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Perhaps I did. Ah. <sighs> yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley sipped, but eager to get back to business, Stanley <coughs> took the first the door there. on his left. Okay, so I guess I just keep going. I don't really... I haven't pl I, like I said, I've played this for like an hour and a half. Uh, I'm trying to decide which way to go. This way looks more interesting. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Alright. Yet there was not a going. single person here either. No. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Take it out, pass it across to another co The same co is not boring you more, and then it ball off inside you. Yes, that works quite well from my experience. Right. I don't know too much about how this game works, though. I think it's made on the Source engine. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. If I wait a minute, something will happen. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Hmm. Alright, I guess there isn't. Fine, you're right again. Mr. English. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hell no. <laughs> this is fun. I like this. Nothing there. I didn't even really do an intro. But Stanley but just couldn't I don't really do know it. how. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. Hold it. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe... It's the same thing! Himself, maybe I am crazy. Or yeah, because you're going in the same thing over and over again. ...out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical uh. sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example... Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> Why did drawers close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Yeah. Were they simply repeating? No. no. Stanley said to himself, couldn't be. This is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a that. dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an sure explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to sure? himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. See if those numbers so, are still the same. He imagined or himself back. flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled Whoa, that he had still bro. not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest the question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Yes, now why are you there? Kind of wish you weren't. Being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming. It's getting really thoughts, boring really fast. Describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. <gasps> how could it be? Yeah, that is was true. Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? All right, just Stanley end the game, is right, as man. awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. 
Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... Stanley's flipping out. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Sure you are, bro. Everything will be fine. Yep. No. I am okay. You're really not, but okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, okay. Let me guess. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a Don't moment time for that. that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran well i already died i guess this is a weird game but yeah, that's the Stanley Pearl for you. It's basically just tons of different endings. Let's see if I can find one more and then I'll end the episode. All of his co so Yeah, I'm back gone. at the beginning again. What did it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, I thought he shot it on me again and I was about to have a spaz attack. Oh, mother. I don't even think you can open any of these doors. Oh. Oh, that one didn't have a number on it. I thought maybe you could open it. Ooh. I swear this is different from last time. Alright, this time I'm going to a set of two open doors. go last. He entered the door on his left. Because I went right last time. Give it a try. Oh, Yet no. There was not a single person here. Better be either. another way to go. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Oh, okay. Hoping Good. he might find it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey, shut up. I'm getting tired of you. I'm getting tired of your ball. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned yeah, to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. 
And so the boss had assigned it uh. an extra secret pin number. Oh, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Oh, no? Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct um. code by sheer luck. Amazing. Uh -oh. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Well, this is odd. I just wanted to turn on my flashlight. Nothing in here? Nope. This is very strange. Alright, well. Let's press elevator to hell. Going down. Oh, loading screen. Every source game has to have the dem loading screens. Dem loading screens. Well, it's, it's a good time to end, actually. I'm going to pick this up in the next episode. Yeah, this has been Let's Play the Stanley Parable, Episode 1. And we're going down, so... Get off my laptop and descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. Oh, wait, it's it was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Alright, well that's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, and in the next episode of The Stanley Parable. So, that's it for now. Take it easy, guys. Get off my laptop. Bye. Alright, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it.